Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I know. This uh, is one of my favorite ones every year, Jeff. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> yes, Jeff. Thank you for it being is, here. I, well, like I, I am honored that I was asked to be back. The third time. Absolutely. Forever. So guys, yeah. this is our third annual Super Bowl episode. And it's not, if, if you're new here to Coffee with MC, we're not going to be talking about X's and O's. We're going to be talking about the people and yes, the fun little facts. And yes, we're going to talk about Taylor Swift. I don't want to hear it. We definitely are. I oh, love for sure her. we are. I That's love exactly it. right. Yeah, I know. And for those of you who are new here, you may not know that our special guest today is actually Meg's dad. Can Jeff you tell? Gravely. I know. <laughs> I know. He's so wonderful and great. And Meg, I'm actually going to let you do the intro. I would love to. I do know him well. Yeah. Um. So everyone, this is Jeff Gravely, aka my father. Um, he is a veteran sportscaster. He has been in the sports industry for almost 40 years. Uh -huh. <laughs> Started when I was 10. Uh -huh, right. And now he is the director of content strategy for NC State Athletics, telling stories about the athletes and um, the awesome school over there in Raleigh. So dad, thanks for being here this morning. Um, we know you've got a lot going on and it's Super Bowl weekend. We're kicking it off with Coffee with MC. So it's well, it's one of my favorite weekends, regardless of who's playing in the game. I've been fortunate to cover two Super Bowls with the Panthers, Super Bowl 38. They lost to the Patriots, Super Bowl 50. They lost to the Broncos, but they also lost to two really good quarterbacks in Tom Brady and Peyton Manning. So um, it's, it's interesting to be in the environment of the Super Bowl. And that's why I love to watch it on TV and have since I was a kid. Absolutely. So you're talking about the quarter. I mean, we can just go right into it. You were talking about the quarterbacks and growing up, you're, you're always someone who, regardless of what game you're watching, you're so interested in the players and their stories. So can you, maybe we kick it off with, you know, whoever you want to, but maybe the quarterbacks or any notable players that are happening. So we can be equipped at our Super Bowl party yeah. to know what the heck we're talking about. Yes. <laughs> well, to, quarterback is the most critical position in sports. Sports, not just football. I All think sports. it's there's so much to process in a short amount of time. And you've got two very interesting quarterbacks. You've got Patrick Mahomes, who was uh, the, the 10th pick overall in his draft, uh, making $59 million a year uh, for the Chiefs. And then you've got on the other side, Brock Purdy, who was the last guy selected in the 2022 draft. The last guy. It's, wow. It's, he's called Mr. Irrelevant. Because he was the last guy picked. And his salary, nothing to sneeze at, but compared to Patrick Mahomes, eight hundred and seventy thousand dollars. So you got fifty nine million over here, eight hundred and seventy nine thousand over here, but both have an opportunity to win the Super Bowl. And for Mahomes, it would be uh, number three for him. And he is, by the way, the yeah. youngest quarterback to ever start four Super Bowls. Okay. In at the same years, right? Of twenty eight. I can't one year younger than someone on the panel. Over there, yeah. It's, it's Mary Cheatham. <laughs> it's me. It's me. Yeah. So, Dad. So, oh my gosh. So, Patrick Mahomes. He went in the. What year did he get drafted? I know you said so it. he was the tenth pick in. I'm, I'm trying to remember. 2017. 17. Okay. In there. Okay. So Brock is significantly younger. Excuse me. We're we're calling him by their first names because uh -huh. we're friends. Yeah. Um. So Brock Purdy is significantly younger than Patrick Mahomes. And he significantly paid less than Patrick Mahomes. That is so interesting. But that might all change if he wins the Super Bowl, right? Oh, yes. When you win the Super Bowl as a quarterback, it puts you in a new category. If you don't win the Super Bowl as a quarterback, you can throw for a bazillion yards and you still have that comma, but never won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. So it does put you in another stat stratosphere as a quarterback. Perfect. Just think of Tom Brady. And the reason why he is regarded as the best of all time is – the number of Super Bowls that he won. Uh, but there have been conversations this week about Mahomes joining um, Tom Brady in the very elite status if he's able to win his third Super Bowl. Uh, so <clears throat> we'll have to see. But Mahomes has done really well uh, in his first few years in the NFL, particularly when it comes wow. to getting the Super Bowl. That is it. so good. That's interesting. Way to drop, drop a, I know. Come the, right the bomb. I know. So, Jeff, what else do we need to know? Well, it's interesting that this is actually a rematch of the two teams that played in the Super Bowl four years ago, Super Bowl 54. Oh. And uh, so while the quarterbacks are different, Patrick Mahomes played in that. The coaches are the same. Uh, Andy oh. Reid for the Chiefs and Kyle Shanahan uh, for the 49ers. The interesting thing about that game was four years ago, Niners had a 10-point lead going into the fourth quarter. 
over the Chiefs. Okay. They didn't score another point. It was 20 to 10, and all of a sudden, Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs oh, scored yeah. 21 straight points to win it 31 to 20. So you remember the name Kyle Shanahan, the head coach of the Niners, lost a big lead in that game. That was not the first time he's done that in the playoffs, though. He was the offensive coordinator, the guy that called the plays for the Atlanta Falcons when they uh, had a huge lead on the the uh, New England Patriots. It was 28-3 to three oh, in I the third that. quarter, and they I lost that, that game too. to the Patriots. Yeah. So Shanahan has never won a Super Bowl, but he has those two um, anchors tied to his feet that keep yeah. dragging him down that you've yeah. lost two of the biggest leads in Super Bowl history and playoff history, and maybe he's the guy that will – get it get it passed this yeah. year because for the Niners they have not won a Super Bowl since 1995 when their quarterback was Steve Young the left-hander it was not Joe Montana Steve yeah. Young passed for six touchdowns in the game in 1995 so the Niners have not won since 95 and obviously the uh, Chiefs are going for back-to-back -back. and that has not happened since we've already talked about it once the Patriots beat the Panthers, and then they followed it up the next year when the Patriots beat the Eagles in 2005. Wow. Okay, so, so it's been almost 20 years since anyone's won back-to-back. -back. Exactly. Cool. Okay. So, y'all, just just a, a pin in this. All the stuff that Dad is saying right now, like, he didn't have to – like, he remembers it off. Oh, the yeah. It is the wild. Oh, no, no, no. I have to look it up some. Believe me. Yeah. I can remember the most insignificant things, but, like, I can't remember what I had for breakfast yesterday. <laughs> But, but that's, that's because it's so interesting. Yeah. And, yeah. And I just, I love that. I think knowing the stories about it, I now feel so much more invested in me too. The outcome. Yeah. So dad, any more notable players, anything else we need to know about uh, the folks playing on Sunday? Well, uh, I think we got to talk about Travis Kelsey. We must. You know, Taylor yeah. Swift, dude. Yeah. yeah. Taylor Swift. Yeah. That dude. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look, he's, he's one of the best tight ends to ever play. As a matter of fact, uh, I believe it was a week ago. Um, he now has the most catches of anyone in the playoff history, Right, anyone. Oh. And we're talking about he passed Jerry Rice, who played on the 49ers, considered the greatest of all time receivers. But Travis Kelsey has more playoff catches than Jerry Rice. He's wow. really good. We mentioned that game four years ago. He caught a touchdown pass in that game. A lot of people are expecting him to catch a touchdown pass this game in the Super Bowl. And if so, you know where the CBS cameras are going to go. <laughs> you know, y'all, I'm not kidding. I love, I'm, I'm, I love Taylor Swift. I know you also yeah, do. Absolutely. And dad, you're not a Swifty, but you respect her. Oh, but totally. And, and before you get to that, absolutely. It, it came up in a memory this week. Um, in 2010, when Megan was 16, we got a suite at PNC Arena for Megan and 10 of her friends to go see Taylor Swift. Yeah. And I'm in the suite. My wife is in the suite. The girls are in the suite and Taylor Swift put on an oh, incredible yeah. show. This was 2010. Mm -hmm. So oh, I yeah. admired her since then because she's a great performer. Absolutely. And fantastic. And yes. So anybody that gets upset that Taylor Swift is being shown on television, Thank come on. You. I don't get and it. And you guys, you guys, think about it too. We're going to get in our feels right now. Think about like all the little girls who are Taylor Swift fans and they're watching football with their dads or their brothers or something for the first time ever, or someone who's invested in this game because of Taylor Swift. That's okay. Like that's, yeah, it's all about the community it's creating. I it's don't know. It's the best marketing like tool the NFL has had this entire year. 1,000%. Yeah. 1,000%. Yeah, and I, I've noticed, I mean, it feels to me, so, so, you know, our, our friend, Jordan, who's our real estate coach, you know, who right. is from Kansas. Yes. So, Big you know, and, and I got to go to the AFC championship two years That's ago right. to watch the chiefs play when they lost, by the way. Mm. Um, I know I was, I was officially never invited back, but, um, <laughs> I, um, you know, so I, I like, I've been a chiefs fan for a while. Um, and, and what I, what I've noticed about watching all of this as it's unfolded is I feel like she's so respectful and so kind and tries to get out of the frame and does, she's not asking for the camera to pan to her. And she's right. not, I don't know. I just, I'm kind of tired of all the hoopla. About it. Like let's let, live and let live. She's being a supportive Absolutely. girlfriend it's, it's, and there's a lot of good that's coming from it. Agree. I agree. And you know, the thing is, is uh, the commissioner of the NFL at his press conference this week was asked about the Taylor Swift effect. And yes. he said, look, she is bringing in people that normally may not watch football. 
Right. And it's not just little girls. It's it's people that may not have an interest in football, but have an interest in her and have an interest in music. And by the way, don't forget that the game is on CBS this year. Okay. And who just had the Grammys last Sunday? CBS. So oh. there's going to be some ties in there. And Taylor won mm -hmm. two uh, Grammy Awards, I believe she won for Album of the Year, which is the big one. Mm -hmm. And then her friend boy, uh, Travis Kelsey, said at a press conference this favorite. week that he uh, he had to get some hardware himself this week to bring yeah. home after. To so, try uh, to I love that. I love it. And, and, and the other thing, too, is yeah. we know, too, she's flying in from Tokyo. She's been in Tokyo doing uh, a concert there. She's going to fly in, is going to get there in time and, and be at the game. And, you know, I think it's a it's a great thing. I, I think it's uh, fantastic. Dad did his Taylor Swift research. I know. I'm so impressed. I am too. I'm too. So yeah. dad, anything, so we know it's in Vegas, anything like significant about the location, the field, yep. anything like that before we wrap up? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, they say that the Super Bowl is in Las Vegas. Well, it's actually <laughs> in a place uh, called Paradise, Nevada, which is the stadium is 10 miles south of Vegas. But you know, so you get, it's the first time Vegas has ever hosted a Super Bowl. Okay. Oh, so, I didn't know that. Okay. That's a huge deal. Don't yeah. you know all the people are having a great time out there? Uh, so the stadium, Allegiant Stadium, was built in 2020. It's the home of the Las, of the, uh, Las Vegas Raiders. Right. And already the Chiefs and the Niners have played there before, and their combined record is 5-0. and oh. So oh. somebody's going to lose for the first time in that stadium. The uh -huh. other neat thing about the stadium I found was is they grow the natural grass outside of the stadium, and then they put it on – a pulley and pull it into the stadium, which is a dome nice. stadium. So yes, it's a dome stadium, but it'll be a natural grass surface. So it's not turf. Amazing. Nope. That's not really turf. Cool. I wonder how That's much great stuff like that back. costs. Oh my goodness. Are you kidding? Yeah. I just Insane. want to mow my lawn. I don't uh -huh. need to pull it into the house. <laughs> uh-huh. Same. So dad, you said they're both five and oh in that stadium. Now who No, do they're you combined five combined, and combined, yeah. Combined yeah. five and oh. Who do you think is going to win? Are there any odds? Is there anyone favored? Well, it's interesting. I think they're two of the better offenses in the NFL. The Chiefs have really done well defensively this year, and I, that could make a difference. But so many people are really high on the Niners' offense and the running backs that they have, the tight ends. They have a really good uh, tight end as well named George Kittle. Uh, they have a, a guy who's a really good wide receiver who played at, uh, at South Carolina, Debo Samuel. So – Right now, they are a two-point favorite. The Niners are oh. over the Chiefs. So do with it what you want. I'm not allowed to gamble in the current uh, <laughs> role that I have at NC State, and that's fine with me. I've never been a gambler. No, you haven't. A lot of people are, and a lot of people don't just look at the score as an outcome to bet on, but they do these prop bets, so to speak, is to right. kind of figure out, kind of make it fun if you're just sitting around watching the yeah. game. I love that. That's, that's what we're doing as a team, right? So we're doing the little squares, oh, yeah. like where yes. you your initials in squares and they write the things on there. So we yeah. just did it at our team meeting yesterday. Okay. We all put our little initials. We pitched in a couple dollars each person and we'll keep our fingers crossed. Yeah. I always like, it can make a fun, uh, if you're at a party and hosting a party, it can make it fun if you don't have a, a dog in the fight, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you can do things as simple as who's, what's the, who's going to win the coin toss. Which team will score the first touchdown? Which yeah. player will score the first touchdown? And they love to do this one. What will be the color of the Gatorade dumped on the winning coach? That's <laughs> one of the most. That's one of the most bet things that there is out there in, in prop bet. So oh, that's funny. Yeah, and then this year, obviously Taylor Swift is in the prop bet category that's as right. how many times will she be shown? Ooh. during the broadcast. Well, I've also heard is like, is, is Travis Kelsey going to flash her little heart hands? Is he going to propose to her after no, the game? No, no. Get out of here. <laughs> we both know, Jeff. We feel strongly about it. You here. cannot propose okay. to Taylor Swift yep. at a football look, game. Yeah. Don't, don't do, look, I, believe me, I had thoughts of proposing to, <laughs> to my wife, Mary, at a baseball game, at a, at, I wanted to do it at home plate or the pitcher's mound. Oh, and that's the, I, her reaction would have been exactly like yours. Was, Don't you dare do so you it. You decided to go like another, another route, yeah. 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 Oh, I know. I, I, I'm glad I didn't. So that's yeah. an thing. The other thing, that? before we before I, I let you go, uh, <laughs> National Anthem, oh, Reba yeah. McIntyre, another prop bet is how long would the National Anthem be? Okay. Mm. did a little research. It's usually about a minute, 55 seconds. Okay. So 
You can go like over, it. you can go under. I like That's one of the things. Also, halftime, Usher will I'm perform. Excited. And people are saying, well, he may bring on someone like a ludicrous, or he may bring on someone like Alicia Keys. Can you imagine Taylor Swift sitting there? Watching, in, yes. Watching that. Like she did the Grammy. She enjoyed the Grammy so much. And the adorable. performance is there. The whole time and yep. for everybody. I heard that Usher added two minutes onto his set. So it'll be a little bit of a longer halftime show than, than normal. Maybe I he also... should go, hey, Taylor, come on down here. Oh, and no, me. get on down. She like jump, gets body surfed down from her seat. Yo, exactly. I love Usher. <laughs> He's great. I don't know if you know this about me. Like, I seriously love Usher. I actually didn't know. And I want y'all to know, do y'all remember when there used to be that show with Ashton Kutcher called Punked? Yes. Yes. Okay, there was an episode of Punk. This is this totally sealed the deal for me. It was my love affair with Usher, which was that they punked Usher. He was in this nice high end store with his brother, his younger brother, and they made it look like that his brother had shoplifted from the store. Oh, I remember. And Usher, y'all, he was mortified and so cute he went right up to the person at the store and said i am so sorry i will make this right and he pulled his brother aside and he said man this is absolutely unacceptable you can't i mean so he's he a good lit and he it was the cute and then of course they told him he was him and punk and he was such a sport about it i mean i was like just i love him you're like he's immediately my top <laughs> favorite friend right, exactly. wow it was jennifer garner yeah i love that too i didn't uh -huh. know that they're both my friends wow Yes. Okay. <laughs> we love Usher, Jeff. We love we Usher. I did not know about Reba. So thank you for that. There you go. Amazing. There you go. So dad, anything else before we ask you our final question? Any, any burning facts that we didn't ask about? No, I, I think, um, you know, we, I think the head coach for the Chiefs, Andy Reid, we talked about Kyle Shanahan for, for the Niners, but Andy Reid's one of those. I he, love him. He's really good. And he's a character. If you've seen him in some of the commercials, he's been really good. And, um, you know, yeah. you remember when they played the Dolphins this year and it was like 10 degrees, his mustache uh -huh. froze. And he's just a brilliant football coach who could really join some elite company this year if he were to win his third Super Bowl. He was with the Eagles before and played in one Super Bowl, but he's out has a chance with the Chiefs to win number three. So amazing. Wow. He's, he's a character within himself, but a really, really good football coach. Cool. Cool. I'm oh, excited. last like very important question. What time is the game? Oh, 6 30. 6 30 is the alleged kickoff. Okay. okay. And it's on CBS, as we mentioned before. So yes, Super Bowl 58 or L V I I I for you Roman numeral fans. I always have to look it up when I when I, you know I know they say Super Bowl 58, but you see on the graphic the number the Roman number, and I always have to go yep. in and figure out what it is. And I, I had to do that again today. So no, I didn't know what L V I I I was 58 until I looked it up. Yeah, I wouldn't know that off the top of my head either. Me neither. No. Lindsay, would you like to ask Jeff our final question? Yes, Jeff. What is saving your life right now? Well. There's a little event going on in about two months down there. That little lady sitting at your right, Mary Cheatham, is getting married. Woo! And I've really enjoyed the last few months and the last few weeks as people prepare. What am I going to wear? You know, I've got to order this tie online. And when is it, is it going to be here? I, I've enjoyed my mom, who's 87 years yeah. old get excited to go and pick out her outfit for the wedding. She had two of her friends take her to the mall this week to go pick out her shoes and her outfit. And so <laughs> just hearing the, the the joy that other people have around this joyous occasion is really what's saving my life. Oh, good one. That's I a thought you were about to make us cry again. One. I got a little curious. I know, I know. I know. Yeah. That's a really good, good one. Dad. I'm excited too. Oh, that, that's the prop bet at our wedding. Will I cry or not? Oh, well, I, you I, cry. Uh -huh. I think I know the answer to that one. Sure do. Yeah. <laughs> sure do. Oh my God. Well, thank you. Dad, thank you so much. Um, can't wait to be really prepared at our Super Bowl party. Yeah. And um Have fun. insight. Eat up. Exactly right. Pumped. Thank Have you. Have a good weekend. See you soon. See Have a Super Bowl weekend. Bye, Dad. Bye. Man, that was so good. I know. I didn't know the quarterback thing is really interesting. Didn't realize that. That was a really good one. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a proposal. Yes. What if instead of what's saving our life this week, we each share a couple of things we can't wait to eat on Super Bowl Sunday? Oh, I love this. Do you okay. have some prepared? Well, I do. So you guys, I have, this is thanks to my friend Greta, Quinn, Greta. Um, Greta. And I just had to send it to my mom. Okay, so you guys, if you want, like obviously meatballs. I mean, I love meatballs, mm -hmm. like nachos, all that kind of stuff. 
But if you want something a little bit lighter in your Super Bowl spread, I have a hot tip, which is I really like it if you make it with the Ithaca hummus. Ooh. Okay, do you ever buy the Ithaca hummus? It, so it comes in like a little a square tub. tub with a white top. And they make a lemon dill one, but I prefer the classic Ithaca hummus. And so you take it and you spread it all on a plate, okay? And then you squeeze a little bit of lemon juice and drizzle some olive oil on it. Okay. And then what you do is chop up any vegetables that you have laying around into little cubes, like um, different. if you have different colored peppers, carrots, okay. cucumbers, um, if you have um, little green onions, little tiny tomatoes, just chop it up and you just sprinkle it on top and serve it with crackers. So you, you can like also scoop? sprinkle feta. So you scoop it and it's like, it's beautiful and it's got all these vegetables on it and it's so that's good. That's so genius. It's so good. That sounds amazing. Okay, so that's my hot tip. Hummus, veggies, potentially feta, scooper. Yes, a vessel but to I, think, I think that sque that squeeze of lemon okay. and the olive oil and maybe some salt and pepper on the hummus, you can do it on the whole thing when it's done too, but I think that makes a big difference. Sounds really It just good. makes it taste really fresh. That sounds really good. And if you good. wanted to sprinkle like, so if you have chopped up herbs, like if you had some cilantro or- mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. I'm going to be doing that. That's my hot tip. My favorite thing that I'm excited to be eating on Super Bowl Sunday, I mean, the classic pistachio. Like I always, uh, dad would uh, always, uh, so you, you for crack any up. game, Shell. crack them. Okay. You cannot get shelled of because it's the experience of cracking Got a pistachio. Got Yeah. Um, you, you, I eat the whole bowl. They're so good. Um, but we recently made nachos, like you said, but we use the Siete chips with them. Like yeah. The healthier chips. Yeah. With ground turkey and all that. I bet like the people who are like, give me the good nachos yeah. are rolling their eyes right now. But um, it's a really good lighter option. You can put some avocado, cheese, all that stuff on top. So pretty so, good. So, you know, Carolyn Duncan, it's my mom. Carolyn. She is very particular about the way that you make nachos. And she says that the key to the whole thing is whatever chips you use, you need like a, a um, sheet pan that has sides on it. And you put down your parchment paper and then you put all your chips on there and you have to heat those first. Good tip. Yeah. So you have to heat this first in like a 350 oven. Get just get them just get them hot. And then you pour your your cheese dip. Also, Carolyn also has discovered that the white cheese dip from Food Lion. The Food Lion. It's brand? a yes. It's like it's called a queso blanco from Food Lion. Is the is the very best one that you well, pour that in there first amazing. and then put your meat and stuff on top. I love this. Okay. Lots of opinions tip. about food. Um <laughs> Yay. Yeah. I'm really excited for Sunday. I feel prepared now. Me too. Happy Super Bowl Sunday. Happy Super Bowl weekend, everybody. Enjoy. Bye, y'all. Bye.